the first breath of life and roll as it shook by the ground where it stood where the angels stood by oh the sign When the men for fear and dread were hiding safe away, the door burst wide and woman's voice cried, There's none inside the grave. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Easter Sunday. It is a pleasure to be able to sing together and hear from God's word, especially this Resurrection Sunday morning. Would you join with me as we hear our call to worship from Psalm 118? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, 
for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let's pray. Oh God, this is the day that you've made. Without Easter, without the resurrection, we would be without hope. So we rejoice and are immeasurably glad in this truth. God, we praise you for Christ, that on the third day he did not stay dead, but displayed his power over death, fully satisfying the wrath we justly deserve and making a way for us to be reconciled to you. We thank you for displaying your steadfast love toward us and sending your son to die and rise again. We can never thank you enough, but we offer up our worship to you. May it be acceptable in your sight this morning. May we celebrate today what is true for us every day, that when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Holy Spirit, help us now. We pray all this in the powerful and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing together. Lift high the name of Jesus, of Jesus our King. Make known the power of His grace, the beauty of His peace. Remember how His mercy reached, and we cried out to Him. He lifted us to song. To freedom from our sin. Oh, see my soul and tell all he's done till the earth and heavens are filled with his glory. Live by the name of Jesus, of Jesus our Lord. His power in us is greater, is greater than this world. To share the reason for our hope, to serve with love and grace, that all who see Him shine through us might bring the Father's praise. Oh, see my soul. Then heavens are filled with His glory. Lift high the name of Jesus, of Jesus, our light. No other name on earth can save. And raise a soul to life. He opens up our eyes to see the harvest he has grown. We labor in his fields of grace as he leads sinners home. Oh, see my soul and tell all he's done. Earth and heavens are filled with His glory. Oh, see my soul and tell all He's done. Till the earth and heavens are filled with His glory.
outward shame But fix our eyes upon the cross And run to Him who showed great love and blood for us Freely bled for us Christ is risen from the dead Trampling over death by death Come away, come away Come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead We are one with Him again Come away, come away Come and rise up from the Hi City Church family, we hope you are well and staying safe during this time. This is Leslie and Benjamin. Um, we know during these times it's hard to see God at work in our lives, but we just wanted to share with you guys how we're seeing God at work in our daily lives at this time. So to begin with, as a family, we've thought about a few things that we think that um, points to the fact that God is with us um, with all that is going on. Um, the first is um, God's blessing of an amazing church family that we have here in Gainesville, an incredible set of pastors and leaders and elders who work around the clock to make sure that we are taken care of and we are nourished spiritually in this season of dryness. Um, we also want to thank God for the gift of technology and how we've used it to stay in touch with each other and encourage each other 
We also want to thank God so much for the gift of life and the gift of good health um, and even his preservation and provision. I think the most profound way that I've seen God work through this difficult time has been through this forced stillness. I'm a chronic yesayer and a serial busybody and I think a part of me really enjoyed that. So the first week of quarantine was really difficult for me. I found myself cleaning the house and redecorating and doing more schoolwork than I needed to, feeling like I needed to be productive. I even took in a foster cat thinking that I, I just like I had to help someone in some tangible way. Um, but the last couple weeks God has really shown me all the unique ways that I can love people. I found myself checking in with family and friends more often, uh, seeing how they're doing physically, mentally, and spiritually. We've watched movies and played games over Zoom, and I've learned that loving people doesn't necessarily mean an act of service. I'm really grateful that during this time, God has shown me that loving each other and loving myself well doesn't necessarily mean having to do something, but sometimes that's just found through rest and stillness. I've been really blessed to have more opportunities to speak with others about God and about the future and hope and ask ways that I can pray and serve others. Additionally, I have been so thankful that God has provided us with the technological advancements that we have today in order to communicate and interact and fellowship. For example, getting to interact weekly with my CG as well as my discipleship group. And then of course, our Sunday service watch parties have been a real blessing and overall it's just reminded me that everything here is temporary and one day all things will be made new and right but until then I hope that we get to have a really amazing reunion and come together when all of this is past and I look forward to seeing you then and I hope God continues to be with you all during this time the big thing that God has impressed upon my heart is a desire to be intentional to take this time and use it wisely to reflect on my motivations for what I'm doing. Um, Jennifer and I have had some great opportunities to have some conversations over dinner to really investigate our hearts and make sure that we are loving Christ first. And how that plays out in everyday life, we've had a chance to meet our neighbors at, at a distance, you know, um, practicing uh, uh, social distancing. Um, and we've also had a chance to support a restaurant in town a couple times. One of the reasons we want to do that is because God has been generous to, generous to us and we want to share that generosity and let others know about the hope that we have in Christ. And it might not be something that we get to do right now. We might not get to say, you know, we are supported in our faith because we believe in a God who takes care of us through crisis. But in the future, when they ask us about the hope we have in Christ, we can tell them that we know a God who loves us and is there for us at all times. Uh, first of all, it has uh, really forced me as a parent and a father to slow down and consider how I've been parenting um, our young kids and how I can be a better reflection of God's love for them. Secondly, this time has been enabling us to uh, form relationships with small businesses and individuals that we may have not been able to reach before. Uh, any of this and so it's been overall it's been a bit difficult time but it's been a big blessing to see uh, where God is working and how he is working during this um, very difficult time and stressful time. In Matthew 16 18 Jesus tells Peter that on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Even the coronavirus can't stop God from fulfilling his will and building his church and it should not deter us from making disciples either. God has also given me, my wife, and my two daughters a moment to rest from our busy day-to-day -day and reflect on all the blessings he's given us. We've had a chance to spend much more of our time together out in nature, enjoying each other's presence, and praising him throughout this Holy Week in song, scripture, and prayer. Through Zoom, we can still have fellowship with our community group and meet on Sunday mornings with all of you. We love you, City Church. He is risen. Good morning and happy Easter. My name is Chipper. I'm one of the pastors of City Church. We are a church aspiring to be an authentic community walking with God in our city. We have this Easter tradition, and so do a lot of other Christians and churches, where the worship leader will say, He is risen, and then you will all respond saying, He is risen indeed. So I'm going to say that in a minute so you can respond accordingly in your own homes. Thankfully, we also have Jay Hand here in the sanctuary filming. 
uh, and we're practicing appropriate social distancing, but he's going to go ahead and respond too, just to throw me a little bit of a bone here. So let's, let's try it together. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks, Jay. We have a few announcements before we hear from God's word together this morning. First of all, we really, really want to hear from you uh, so we can be praying for you, especially during this time. We have a, a virtual connection card. You should see the link on your screen right now. Please consider filling that out um, so that we can pray. You can also indicate questions you might have about our church, and we'll get back to you in a couple of days. We worship a generous God, and so part of our responsive worship as a people of God is giving generously. Um, the best way to do that right now, of course, is online, and you see the URL here on your screen, citychurchgnv.com slash give. We are doing another full run-through of a class called Questioning Christianity, and it starts tomorrow night, uh, Monday night at 8 p.m. Tomorrow night, Monday night at 8 p.m., virtually, of course, via Zoom. There's information about it on our website, also on Realm. This is a class for people that want to deal with some of the more difficult questions that Christians have to wrestle with. So it could be for people who would call themselves Christians, uh, but maybe are, are wrestling with some of these questions, have doubts. It could be also uh, for people who would say they're more skeptical about Christianity or wouldn't even call themselves Christians at all. So we're starting that again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. To get the information, to get the link, you'll have to uh, either be on Realm or you can email me personally, Chipper at citychurchgnv.com. I'm happy to give you that information. Then Wednesday night, we have our all-church prayer gathering, 8 p.m., um, again, via Realm. That's how you would see, uh, via Zoom, but you would check Realm to get the information or email me if you want the link. But that's Wednesday night, 8 p.m. We're going to keep doing that weekly until uh, all this quarantine business is over. And hey, who knows, maybe even beyond that. We, each week here at City Church, are trying to highlight two uh, downtown small businesses that we are encouraging you, church family, to support as much as possible, either by getting delivery or takeout or buying uh, gift cards. And the two businesses of the week um, are Lucy's and Boca Fiesta. Lucy's and Boca Fiesta. So, so this week we think it would be wonderful if you would go ahead and go to those establishments and, and do delivery, takeout, or... Um, gift cards. On that note, let me read our passage for this morning. We are taking a brief break from the book of Mark, and we are in the book of John. We are in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. John 20, 11 through 18. The passage will be up here on the screen, but we also love it when you pull your Bible out and follow along with us. John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Let's pray together. Lord, this victorious Easter morning, a victorious Easter morning in which the circumstances of our gathering are different than many of us have ever experienced or maybe ever will experience again. In the midst of this, would your spirit work to change us? 
But we don't, we don't want to engage this and be the same people after we hear your word and sing these songs this morning. We want to love you more, to be more in awe of you and who you are. For those who are watching that don't know Jesus, I pray that, that the hearing of this text and the singing of these songs and the prayers we're praying would penetrate their hearts. They might become followers of Christ Jesus. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Four weeks ago, when we had our first virtual gathering due to COVID concerns, we actually looked at a passage in Mark chapter 6 in which the disciples had what you might call a seeing problem or a vision problem. They failed to see or to recognize that Jesus was walking on the water because they were so bound up with fear and anxiety. You might say that they were awash and their own feelings and emotions, essentially incapable of seeing anything other than the crisis that was right in front of their noses. And this morning in John chapter 20, we're actually encountering another seeing problem. However, the cause of Mary Magdalene's seeing problem, her vision problem, is, is far more positive and even beautiful, and I think it will provide unparalleled encouragement for us all this morning. You're going to ask, you're going to want me to stop. I'm, it's going to be so encouraging. You're going to need to take a shower after we're done with all of this. I want you to know that I'm expanding on an observation that comes up at the very end of the last session of the questioning Christianity class that we just completed a week ago, although this observation isn't original to the class either. I'm mainly doing this because this is a beautiful observation and theme that, that can't possibly be more timely given our global moment. And of course, I'm also trying to whet your appetite for the class, which again resumes uh, tomorrow night or starts afresh tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Together this Easter morning, we'll consider two reflections, two reflections. Number one, the perfect, perfect Jesus. And then number two, the perfect people of God. The perfect, perfect Jesus. And then the perfect people of God. Let's start with that first reflection, the perfect, perfect Jesus. There are plenty of happy surprises in our text this morning, but one of the best surprises is actually also one of the easiest to overlook. Look with me again at verses 11 through 14. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. She did not know that it was Jesus. Uh, excuse me, she, she didn't know? I mean, of, of all people, Mary Magdalene should have recognized Jesus. She traveled with Jesus and apparently helped support his ministry with her resources. You can see this in Luke chapter 8. She personally witnessed Jesus' crucifixion. You can see this in all four gospel accounts. But still, she looked right at Jesus and didn't know who he was. This is definitely a surprise, but, but is this really a happy surprise? I mean, is, isn't this like seeing your hairdresser of 15 years at the grocery store and failing to make that connection? Isn't this like forgetting the name of your best friend's spouse? Actually, no. This had nothing to do with amnesia. Clearly, Mary still knew what Jesus looked like. She didn't forget in just a couple of days. The issue wasn't Mary. The issue is actually Jesus. Why? Because although Jesus was fully there, this wasn't a mirage, this wasn't a ghost. He was different. His presence was different. His appearance was different. And what explains this difference? 
Here's what. Jesus had victoriously risen from the grave with his resurrection body. With his resurrection body. On one hand, it was still his body. The tomb was empty, and there were very real scars on his resurrection body from the crucifixion. But though it was still his body, it was a transformed body. It was a transformed body. And we know this because this transformed body becomes a sort of prototype for the resurrection bodies that the people of God will receive when they join with Jesus in this eternal resurrection life. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 23, But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Jesus rose from the dead with this transformed resurrection body. And when Christ returns, all followers of Jesus will enjoy transformed resurrection bodies that are like his glorious, transformed body. And now we understand why Mary didn't recognize him at first. You see this? He was still Jesus, but he was a resurrected Jesus with a resurrection body. Or we might say that the perfect Jesus had become an even more perfect Jesus. He was the perfect, perfect Jesus. But then she did recognize Jesus because he was still Jesus. Look at verses 15 through 16. Jesus said to her, that is Mary, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking, supposing him to be the gardener? She said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. At first, she didn't recognize Jesus because he was transformed. But then he spoke to her. And after speaking to her, she recognized him because he was still Jesus. The very end of the questioning Christianity class, this is described very beautifully as, as something akin to running into a, a friend from high school that you haven't seen in 20 years. And she comes up to you and says, hey, remember me? Remember me? And at first you don't because you haven't seen her in 20 years. But then she says, hey, it's, it's me, Sally. We went to high school together. And then you recognize her and you say, oh, oh, yes, of course, Sally. It's so wonderful to see you again. Sally has changed. It's been 20 years. But at the same time, it's still her. And now you see it. Now you see it. That was Mary's experience with Jesus. And it was clearly emotional and joyful, which is why Jesus told her, verse 17, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. There's, there's still more of my mission to go here. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And then, of course, see verse 18. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. In Mark chapter 6, in the midst of the stormy seas, the disciples just could not understand what they were seeing, even though Jesus was right in front of them. But Mary eventually got it. She eventually got it, and so she announced to the disciples, I have seen the the Lord. I've seen the Lord. Remember, this was a paternalistic society caught up with maintaining spiritual appearances and pedigrees, but God chose a previously demon-possessed woman to make this announcement. Why, did, why would he do that? Because God's M.O. entails working out his mission by means of the outcast 
and the marginalized and the lowly. If you're looking for a God who likes to carry out his mission by joining hands with the influencers and the powerful people, keep looking, that's not the God of the Bible. If all of this doesn't elevate the intensity and, and the joyfulness of our Easter worship, probably nothing will. Church, when we celebrate the risen Jesus on Easter morning, we are, we are celebrating the perfect, perfect Jesus. It's, it's still Jesus, but it's Jesus with his glorious resurrection body. I mean, it's kind of over the top. And one day we're going to meet this resurrected Jesus in person, and then we'll live with him forever. We'll live with him forever. But actually it gets even better because we'll have some additional company with us in that new and eternal city. And Jesus' transformation has something to show us about that as well. So on to our second reflection. The perfect people of God. Let me be the first to tell you that the people of God are in fact not perfect. They're not perfect. In fact, it is our imperfection that drives us to Jesus. In case you're watching or listening to this and, and have little context for what a church community is like, please know that it's essentially a hospital for sick people. That's what a church is. It's a hospital for spiritually sick people. A church community is not a place where spiritual giants sanctimoniously practice their faith so that others can observe and approve. It's actually a community of completely imperfect people who bring the perfect Jesus to one another through scripture, through prayer, through the sacraments like baptism and communion, through singing, and so forth. So why this reflection on the perfect people of God? Not because of who we are now, but because of who we one day will be. In our Good Friday service, we saw that in Jesus, death and hope end up coming together. Ours is a moment where death is constantly on the front page, but not so much hope. Everything is exceedingly bleak. But in Jesus, death and hope, they come together. During the service, I mentioned three reasons why the manner of Jesus' death was so hopeful even before we heard anything about the resurrection. But now, now, since we're hearing about his resurrection, since, since verse 12, two angels dressed in white are sitting where Jesus' body should have been, now we know exactly what Jesus was doing to death on the cross. He was killing it. He was killing it. He was killing its power. Death, death had all of us in chains on account of our sin, but Jesus was breaking those chains on account of his sinless death and victorious resurrection. And that's why followers of Jesus can now sing. And here I'm just quoting words from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is why we can sing, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? which is why we call Jesus the first fruits, the first fruits. He's the first fruits because there's the second fruits. <laughs> namely those who are freed from the chains of death by Jesus, namely those who are buried with him into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Walking in newness of life, let me tell you, is great now. It's wonderful now. But let me tell you something. When Christ returns and we put on our resurrection bodies, man, it's going to be something. We're going to enter the gates of the holy city, the new Jerusalem. And you know what? At first, we're not going to recognize one another. At first, we're not going to recognize one another. Why? Because like Jesus, we'll have on our transformed, 
resurrection bodies. They will still be our bodies, but they will be transformed bodies. You will walk up to me and you'll say, Hey, do you recognize me? And I'll walk up to you and say, Hey, do you recognize me? And at first I won't, and at first you won't, because we'll have on our perfectly transformed resurrection bodies. But then we'll introduce ourselves, and things will start to click. Hey, I'm Matt. You were part of the same church family. And then I'll say, Matt, it is you. It is you. And you know, who, who could have imagined that you could be like this? We'll have a family reunion where we'll all be living perfectly into our calling as the image bearers of the triune God. We'll look perfect. We'll act perfectly but of course, all of that will pale in comparison to the opportunity we will have to live forever in the presence of the perfect, perfect Jesus. A presence that Scripture talks about is going to be so glorious that we won't even need to be, we won't even need the sun because his presence is going to light up the whole city. Followers of Jesus, be so encouraged and so hopeful Death could take all of us tomorrow. But all that would do would be to, it would hasten the day when we're in the new city and we're walking up to one another and we're saying, hey, do you recognize me? And it takes a minute. All it will do, if death takes all of us tomorrow, is hasten the day when we will be forever in the eternal presence of the perfect, perfect Jesus. And those of you who aren't following Jesus, would you be buried and raised with this Jesus this morning? Would you be buried and raised with Jesus? Would you cast all of your hope on the Christ Jesus this morning so you can join us in that eternal city one day and you will walk up to us and say, hey, do you recognize me? And it'll take us a minute, but then we will. City Church, I love you. Happy Easter. Amen. Let me pray for us. Lord God, what victorious resurrection hope we have right now. It just cuts like a knife through butter <laughs> through the bleakness that we are living in the midst of right now, through the disappointment, through the fear. Again, I just want to ask for those that don't know this Christ, would they even this morning throw their hope onto, onto that very Christ Jesus? We love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Each week at City Church, we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, and we say things like, hey, this is an opportunity to remember uh, Christ crucified for us. This is an opportunity to remember Christ with us until the very end of the age. Amen and praise God, but Christ crucified for us wouldn't mean anything unless he was raised. So celebrate City Church this Easter morning. Celebrate the Lord's Supper victoriously because he was raised. And so, in fact, his body was given for us. The sinless man took upon our sin. And the reason it counts for anything is because Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, and he's coming back. I'm going to set the table, so to speak, for the Lord's Supper in just a moment. Uh, and then after that, I will pray and then use whatever ingredients you have in your home that are closest to the bread in the cup, and, and take and eat, and maybe say to one another, uh, virtually even, um, or those who might be in your home right now, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. 
The Apostle Paul writes that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was to be betrayed, shared a meal with his disciples. And during the meal, he took the bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you, given for you. Do this whenever you eat of it, in remembrance of me. And then in a similar manner, after the meal, Jesus took the cup, and as he poured it, he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, the Apostle Paul reminds us that we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again, a death that matters because he was raised, and therefore he is coming again. So Christian hope, followers of Jesus, Christian hope is not an if, it is a glorious win. Again, I'm going to pray for us. This is a, a meal for followers of Jesus. If that describes you, we encourage you to partake this morning. If you're not a follower of Jesus, instead of taking a meal that you wouldn't profess to believe in, we would encourage you to reflect on the glorious hope that followers of Jesus have uh, held out for them. Would that be your hope this morning? Would you trust in Jesus? Email me, reach out to me personally. I would love to talk to you more about that. Jipper at citychurchgnv.com. Call the church. Uh, send a, a smoke signal, whatever you need to do to get in touch with me. I would love to talk more with you about this. Let's, let's pray together. We do give you thanks. More than ever, perhaps, Lord, on this Easter morning. For your body, O oh Lord Jesus, broken for us, and your blood shed for us. I do pray that you would fortify us spiritually in the taking of this meal. And Lord, root out sin that needs to be exposed, that we might bring it to you, bring it into the light, and receive afresh the forgiveness we have because of Christ Jesus. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom come and to rest the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died praise the the sun, praise the Spirit, be God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. 
breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born and the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the the King of Kings. Praise forever to the King of Kings.
Sunday I came Laid down in grief But woke with the keys Of hell on that day First born of the slain The man Jesus Christ laid Death in his grave Well, it's been a joy to sing together um, this Easter Sunday. As we close our service, would you hear this benediction? Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. I mean, of all people, Mary Magdalene should have recognized Jesus. She traveled with Jesus and apparently helped support his ministry with her resources. See Luke chapter 8. She personally witnessed Jesus' crucifixion. See all four.